I've been trying to make today's video for weeks now and it's not just because I've been busy I've just been sort of collecting my thoughts and watching and listening for the repercussions the conversations happening and seeing if there were any outcomes that I could address in today's video hey there everyone this is Jessica from domesticatingme.com I am a lifestyle creator I create content about beauty fashion luxury family travel and so much more if any of those topics interest you go ahead and click that subscribe button below and the bell icon next to the subscribe button so you can set your notifications on for all I make new videos every week but I don't have a set schedule so if you have your notifications on you won't miss a thing so about a month ago Pharrell came out with his men's fall winter collection this was the second big collection for the brand the theme for the collection was a blend of Western and workwear we definitely saw the cowboy aesthetic coming through we also saw the workwear coming through. For this collection, we saw the collaboration between Louis Vuitton and Timberland with their Timberland boots. And we also saw a collaboration between Pharrell and some Native American designers. I'm just gonna take this quote directly from Pharrell. First of all, it was an honor to get a chance to do something around the West and Western workwear vibes. I feel like when you see cowboys portrayed, you see only a few versions. You never really get to see what some of the original cowboys really look like. They look like us. They look like me. They look black, they look Native American. Now I'm not gonna go too deep into the collection itself. At this point, if you are interested in this topic, you've seen the collection, you've seen the pieces, you've heard YouTubers and fashion critics talk about the collection. If you like it, you like it. If you don't, you don't. Personally, I liked a lot of the Western pieces. Some of it was just a little too literal for me, a little too out there for me, but that's okay. Not everything has to be everyone's vibe, right? But I did like some of the pieces. I'm a New York City girl. I wear Timberland. I've worn Timberland since I was a child, so when that sneak peek came out, I was definitely intrigued and I was really happy to see that they had multiple versions of the boots. Now, we don't know what's going to go into production, but I've already called my essay and said, I need a pair of those boots, so hopefully that'll happen. But for today's video, I want to focus on Pharrell's inspiration and collaboration with Native American designers. So a little bit about me, I am of Quichua descent. We are a native group of South America, specifically from Ecuador. I am not Native North American, but since I was featured on YouTube's homepage in celebration of World's Indigenous Peoples Day, I have followed and have been followed by a lot of Native American groups and First Nations people. And so that is why right before the event, I had seen these rumors and these sneak peeks of a collaboration with Native American designers, which again made me super excited. During the actual fashion show, you definitely saw the Native American presence there. There was Native American dancers, there were Native American drumming and singing. The show also featured Native American models. And then we saw some of the pieces that were made in collaboration with Native American designers. We saw bags with beautiful Native American embroidery and I was just in love. I had goosebumps. I loved that entire show. Even if the entire collection wasn't for me, just the show itself just gave me goosebumps. I absolutely was floored. And then of course there was a performance with Pharrell and Mumford and Sons. They were performing their song together, Good People. I personally love that song. I'm a fan of Mumford and Sons. I am a big fan of Pharrell's work, obviously. He's so, I mean, he's a genius, a musical genius. I love the song. And the song also featured Native American drumming in the background. It also seemed gospel-y to me almost, like something I would hear here in a church. Uh, it was just fantastic. So the show ended and I kind of just waited to see the information to come out, see the press releases, see the photos, and I was disappointed. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but if my memory serves me right, I went to Pharrell's Instagram page and there was like practically nothing, right? There was only like one post. I think he has three posts now up. I went to Louis Vuitton's Instagram page and they started posting a lot of photos of the pieces, of the looks, but there was no direct mention about the Native American designers. Someone posted a photo of the paper with information that they were given at the runway show. It talks about the first cowboy, workwear intrinsic to the American Western wardrobe, amplifying tropes from denim to blanket coats, buffalo check and chaps through heightened confection rooted in cowboy iconography, Timberland, and then it says Dakota and Lakota, 
a creative exchange. And then for this, it says, the collection features collaborations with artists from the Dakota and Lakota nations across accessories, as well as the show's staging and soundtrack. Headed by the creative director DJ Two Bears of the Standing Rock Sioux Tribe. Then there is Dakota flowers and bar flesh bags. Created with artists of the Dakota and Lakota nations, a speedy bag, messenger bag, and travel tote are embroidered with Dakota flower, symbolizing the beautiful roots of nature. These bar flesh motif and teepee bag inspired keep ball bags hand-painted in the North Dakota studio of DJ Two Bears carry the topa design signifying the four winds of the earth. He collaborated with designers, but there's only one person mentioned here who's fantastic. You know, that's amazing that this person was brought in and facilitated the collaboration, but that was all I knew. And the only reason why I knew who the designers were was because I was following some of them already. Because I follow a lot of Native American designers and I've been talking about how I want to buy more Native American pieces, accessories, clothing. It's a goal of mine for this year. So it was disappointing to see that there was a, not a lot of information. Louis Vuitton's Instagram did not tag anybody, Pharrell did not tag anybody about the collaboration. So if it wasn't for these designers, you know, saying, hey, we did this, if it wasn't for that, I would have no idea who the designers were. So here are the designers. I'm gonna be reading this from the Instagram account of Lauren Goodday. She is a Native American fashion designer. She was one of the collaborators for this collection. She writes, the four Native artists who created for the Louis Vuitton Men's Fall 2024 collection include Trey Little Sky, Jossie Little Sky, and Kendra Redhouse. Specifically, we worked on the handmade blanket, which took many hours and required the technical skills of each of us to accomplish the final outcome. Together, we are comprised of artisans from the Lakota, Dakota, Nakota, Mandan, Hidatsa, Arikara, Blackfeet, Cree, and Navajo nations. Apologies if I mispronounce any of those. Its creation exemplifies the collective spirit we strive to embody. The collection was inspired by the American West, which included representation of Native America. I appreciate the Native creative director, a longtime friend, Chief I, who invited me on the team of artists and creatives. My goal in this project was to uplift and celebrate Indigenous artistry, creativity, and heritage. As a Native artist, I deeply value opportunities to showcase our diverse talents and cultures there were many multi-tribal creatives involved in the production from artists, designers, models, dancers, and singers. I want to express my heartfelt appreciation for their work, congratulate and encourage them to continue sharing their vibrant expressions. Now this came after there was already some controversy brewing and conversations happening about the use of Native American work and presence in this collaboration. Here is her entire statement, which you can pause to read in its entirety, but she goes on to say she had no input, insight, or involvement on the runway or post-show productions. Personally, from what I saw, there was a lot of disappointment because Pharrell and the brand wasn't specifically calling out, um, crediting these Native American artists at least publicly. Again, I read you what the pamphlet said. It didn't even include the designer's names. Some of the articles that came out after the collection also did not include a lot of names. It was very vague about the designers, about the work that they did. And so I think that's where a lot of the disappointment, you're gonna work with a creative artist, let's uplift them. And so that is when the conversation about is this cultural appreciation or is it cultural appropriation really started to hit off. Before we continue, let's talk about what cultural appropriation is. Cultural appropriation harms marginalized communities by perpetuating stereotypes or commodifying their culture. Cultural appropriation can include exploitation of another culture's religious and cultural traditions, dance, steps, fashion, symbols, language, and music. Now, unfortunately, Pharrell does have a little bit of history with Native Americans and cultural appropriation. He actually wore a Native American headdress on the cover of Elle magazine. I'm going to read you another excerpt here. In the 2010s, the rise of music festivals such as Coachella sparked new trends in festival fashion, including Native American war bonnets worn as headdresses. Unlike traditional Native American jewelry, much of which is sold by indigenous artists to customers of all cultures, these feathered headdresses hold a significant cultural purpose among Plains Indian communities war bonnets are worn only by community leaders on special occasions. In other groups, they're an earned honor, not unlike a military medal. 
Because they separate the war bonnet from its original cultural meaning, non-indigenous festival attendees wearing Native American headdresses are practicing cultural appropriation. Pharrell did wind up apologizing for that, but did he learn? Well, let's go back to discussing this fashion show. Once again, he collaborated with Native American designers on some of the pieces from this collection. We see a lot of turquoise, which is a traditional stone used by Native Americans in their jewelry. It doesn't seem like the turquoise pieces were done in collaboration with any Native American designers. Again, there were four Native American designers that Louis Vuitton and Pharrell worked with for this collection, but they were not in my opinion, they were not shouted out, they were not credited as much as I think they should have been. Again, I combed through Instagram, I combed through press releases and articles and found very few people who discuss at any adequate length what the collaboration entailed, who the designers were, what the design process was like. Most of the things that I saw about the collaboration came from those Native American designers on their own platform. So I'm talking about their own personal Instagram pages. They posted photos and videos of their work. It wasn't done by the brand or Pharrell. And I think that to the core was a big disappointment to a lot of people who were excited about seeing Native American culture and traditions and pieces displayed on such a huge, world-renowned stage. Some of you might be thinking this criticism is a stretch. Because it's so easy to be gaslit into thinking that what you're seeing isn't really happening, let me show you a few things. This is the Louis Vuitton page for the Fall Winter 2024 collection. While they mention American Western wardrobe, cowboy-inspired silhouettes, and workwear details, they talk about the scenery and even highlight some of the guests who attended the show, there is not a single mention of anything Native American on this entire page. The page even promotes the song Good People and presents it as the British band Mumford & Sons new song produced by Pharrell. There is no mention of any Native American contributions to the music of the event. Thanks to a video posted by DJ Two Bears on his Instagram page, we know that Lakota Hokie Claremont composed the song Spirit of Saturday Night Live for the show. We also know that the song Good People contains Native American voices, so why the omission? One could argue that songs don't often credit what might be considered background singers in such a prominent way or that large brands work with skilled designers and artisans for their pieces without specifically naming them. But if this is a collaboration that's meant to uplift and showcase this underrepresented and marginalized community, it just seems like a bad choice to me. And finally, this is the Louis Vuitton press release that was sent out to the media. Let me point out some differences between what was handed out at the fashion show and this published version. They combined the two separate sections about Native American creative exchange and bags into just one section. It includes an addition to creative director DJ Two Bears' bio, which now includes his practice covering design, film, music, dance, and activism. For some reason, they removed the line that credits his North Dakota studio as a place where keep all bags were hand painted. And once again, they did not mention any of the four Native American designers they collaborated with. They also poignantly add that the artistic exchange builds on a decade-long relationship between Pharrell Williams and the Dakota and Lakota nations. I'll touch on that a little bit later in this video. At the end of the press release, it includes information about the soundtrack of the show. It says that it features four original pieces, The Spirit of Saturday Night Live by Native Voices of Resistance and Pharrell, composed by Lakota Hokie Claremont and Pharrell, Good People by Mumford and & Sons and Pharrell Williams, Shotgun Wedding by Pharrell Williams and Jelly Roll, and Doctor by Pharrell Williams and Miley Cyrus. To be fair, I do want to mention that the LVMH website does include information about the Native American contributions to the collection. It mentions the debut of a turquoise colored speedy bag, although it does not make the connection with anything Native American there. But then it does go on to say accessories, staging, and music all featured creative exchanges with artists from the Dakota and Lakota nations, thanks to DJ Two Bears of the Standing Rock Sioux Tribe. Native American culture is celebrated in flower motifs on bags symbolizing the beautiful roots of nature, as well as hand-painted parflesh motifs on keep-all bags. 
Some of the criticism came because some people think that these Native American designers should have never collaborated with the brand because they see them as basically the antithesis of some of their beliefs. And specifically, I'm talking about sustainability. As we all know, Louis Vuitton does not hold any sales. What they do is they burn their pieces, their products, rather than put them on sale and devalue their pieces and their brands, they will just burn their pieces or get rid of them, slash them up so that they're not available um, for resale or on sale. Now, if you're someone who cares about sustainability, that's not something that you are a fan of, obviously. Now, some people mentioned that the average or most people of Native American communities won't be able to afford these pieces. We do have information about a few bags from this collection and the pieces are very expensive, even for the average LV customer. Of course, these bags will likely be very limited and are made with exotic leather and even real silver, so the prices are not entirely shocking, but there you go. That's another reason why they feel like this collaboration should have never happened. But for me, again, it was just that lack of credit, that lack of exposure, that was really disappointing. Now the Native American designers have not said much or anything at all really that I could find that was sort of negative about the outcome of the fashion show, but I wouldn't expect that either. I've been a part of some collaborations where I was promised, you know, exposure and support and this is gonna happen and we're gonna do this and then it happens and, you know, they didn't deliver on their promises. I definitely wouldn't expect them to say anything publicly about their disappointments or what they were promised or what they thought this collaboration was going to turn into and what it actually was. You can pause to read these posts from some of the designers that worked on the collection. Some people even think that Pharrell was always going to do a Western inspired fashion show and have Native American inspired pieces and he just needed token Native Americans to be the face so that he could produce what he was going to produce and say, no, but look, I did it in collaboration with them. That's a theory out there. But I felt like I just needed to share that, that that is how some people felt. Like he just needed to say that he was working with this so that he could produce what he was always going to produce, but then not have a lot of negative feedback afterwards. Remember that line in the press release about Pharrell's decade-long relationship with the Dakota and Lakota nations? That line led me to do some more research on said relationship, and here's what I found. Pharrell does indeed have a history of working with Native Americans. In his 2016 collaboration with Adidas, Pharrell traveled to North Dakota and worked with the MHA Nation for the Human Race Collection campaign. In his 2021 collab with Adidas, he unveiled the Sechona sneakers, named after the indigenous phrase connecting to the earth, the Dakota way of saying barefoot, an idea given to him by two bears. To celebrate the launch of the sneakers, Adidas and Pharrell Williams helped fund a 10 kilowatt solar array training and demonstration project for the youth of Standing Rock. The Adidas press release stated that this donation will not only go toward producing enough clean energy to power a community center, but will also serve as a broader educational platform. I believe this initiative came about because of Pharrell's relationship with Cody Two Bears, DJ Two Bears' brother, who runs a nonprofit called Indigenized Energy. So there are real friendships and partnerships at the core of these projects. After reading interviews and hearing Pharrell speak about his admiration for Native Americans and seeing how he's collaborated with and supported Native American artists, nonprofits, and activism, I do believe he is genuine in his desire to collaborate and uplift Native communities, culture, traditions, and artistry. I just don't think it was done the right way in this collaboration with Louis Vuitton. Especially when you see no mention of Native Americans on the LV website and their Instagram account after having Native Americans design pieces, compose music, perform at the show, walk on the runway, etc. I don't know who exactly is responsible for the seeming erasure of quote unquote the Native American spirit, but I hope they figure out a way to correct it. At the end of the day, when a marginalized group is saying that there is something wrong here, I personally believe that it's important to listen to them. Maybe we'll learn something, maybe we'll see something that we didn't see before because we're not a part of those communities. Maybe we'll still disagree. But again, I think it's important not to center ourselves and hear what they have to say. That's why I encourage you to listen to Native North Americans discuss their views on this collaboration if this topic interests you. I'd like to take this opportunity to amplify one creator in particular, Recycled Stardust, who has been very vocal about why she's not a fan of this entire situation. 
With that said, there are other Native Americans who are happy to see Native American culture shared with the world in this way. There are even some who are disappointed with how this collaboration worked out, but are still thrilled for the four designers whose works were included. To the point of me filming this, I have not personally seen anything about what's actually going into production and if the pieces that were made by Native Americans are going to be in production and if so, how many are going to be produced, what is the price of those pieces, are they going to be accessible, likely not, but anyway, don't have any of that information, which I think would have really helped me come to my final conclusions, but there you go. Now, if some of those native inspired designed pieces go into production, here's what I would personally like to see. Number one, I would love for these native American creators to be credited and compensated for their creations very well. That obviously would be behind doors, but that is just my wish, my desire. Number two, I would love to see those pieces actually produced within Native American communities in their U.S. factories. We know that Louis Vuitton now has factories in the U.S. I've already seen a pair of boots, of the cowboy boots, that were made in Texas. So I think it can be done and it would be great if this is what we, where we see true collaboration, where these Native American inspired, Native American designed pieces are made by Native Americans so that the communities are benefiting from this collaboration. I would love to see a philanthropic component to the collaboration where Louis Vuitton as a brand and as a major company with lots and lots of money can actually give back to these communities. For example, percentages of those sales going back to Native American communities, Native American nonprofits. And if a limited number of those pieces are made, again, I would like to see them be made by Native American craftsmen so that once again, these artists and communities are being compensated for the use of their culture, tradition, designs. Now, if you happen to be out there and thinking you're asking for way too much, Jessica, that is too much. You know what was a good collaboration with a Native American designer? Polo by Ralph Lauren and Naomi Glasses. Naomi Glasses was named an artist in residence for the brand. And in this collaboration, she designed several pieces that are sold on the Polo by Ralph Lauren website. Those pieces are stunning, gorgeous beautiful oh my god i would love to own something from that collaboration but more than just design some pieces let me go into some of the details about how this collaboration is working it says here the company partners with Diné navajo textile artist naomi glasses to create special edition product collections for polo ralph lauren the inaugural collection of the company's artist in residence program which invites artisans working with a variety of skill sets and mediums to participate in an immersive collaboration with ralph lauren's creative teams ralph lauren's design ethos has long been inspired by the land's culture cultures and artistry that make up the fabric of America. Aligned with its commitment to re-examine what and who is included in its depiction of American experience, the company has been on a journey to amplify diverse stories, deepen its sources of inspiration, and ultimately form creative partnerships with the communities that inspire its designs. Glasses, an avid turquoise and silver collector, curated a unique selection of handcrafted silver and turquoise jewelry from six artisan families throughout the Navajo Nation, Hopi Pueblo, San Felipe Pueblo, and Suni Pueblo showcased throughout the campaign and profiled in RL Magazine. In line with Ralph Lauren's commitment to deepen its engagement with Native and Indigenous communities, a percentage of the purchase price from sales of the first drop of the Polo Ralph Lauren by Naomi Glasses collection will benefit Change Labs, a Native-led organization focused on fostering the creation of successful Navajo and Hopi small businesses. This builds on the ongoing efforts by the company and the Ralph Lauren Corporate Foundation to preserve cultural heritage and enable access to educational and career opportunities among Native communities throughout their support of organizations like the American Indian College Fund, Creative Futures Collective, the Institute of American Indian Arts, the Smithsonian National Museum of the American Indian, and the Southwestern Association for Indian Arts, among others. So you see, these collaborations with Native Americans can be done, they can be done well, they can be done in a way that compensates the artists, that credits the artists in an appropriate way, an appropriate amount, that compensates those artists and their communities and with the sale of the products that are inspired by the, these cultures and designed by these artists that some of those funds can be brought back to those communities to benefit those communities. Again, I don't know what's going into production from this collection. I don't know any details about if and what's going to happen with these pieces. If these Native American inspired and designed pieces do go into production, I would love to see some of the proceeds, some of the money that is made from the sale of these pieces to go to these artists and their communities. And especially for a brand as big as Louis Vuitton, 
um, I think they can have a meaningful impact on these communities. And ultimately, in those follow-up actions, will we see whether this was cultural appropriation or cultural appreciation. But listen, at the end of the day, if you want to support Native American communities, if you want to support Native American designers, you should definitely buy from them directly. I'm going to list here some of my favorite Native American designers and brands that you can shop from directly. Again, if you're a fan of these looks of these pieces, of these cultures, of these traditions, of the craftsmanship that's behind all this, you can definitely do some appreciating yourself by shopping from them directly. So those are my thoughts. Let me know what you think. I am eager to hear what you guys think about this. Use the comment section below to let me know what your thoughts are, what you think about the collection in general, what you think about these pieces, what do you think about the collaboration. Now that you've seen or not seen the outcome of the collection and their connection with Native American communities, what are your thoughts? Please give this video a thumbs up and share if you enjoyed it, if you learned anything from it, if you just find the topic interesting. It's a really great way to support my channel and I really, really appreciate it. Click or tap right here to watch my last video or click down below to watch another video that you might enjoy. Thanks again for watching. Stay tuned.